let's find Laplace transform of sine of a t. Our given problem is f of t is equal to sine of a t and t is greater than or equal to zero. So let f of s be equal to sine of a t. And we're going to apply the definition of Laplace. So Laplace of sine of a t will be equal to f of s and f of s is equal to limit as capital A is approaching to infinity integral from 0 to a e to the negative st times f of t dt and our f of t is sine of a t that's what we defined so we can solve this integral and find the Laplace transform of sine of a t so f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity integral from 0 to a e to the negative st times sine of a t dt this integral is integration by parts and integration by parts formula is u times v minus integral of v du if you're fluent at integration by parts these kind of questions will be brief I have detailed integration by parts videos and simple tabular method here at integration by parts our integral will be made up of two functions one of the function will be our u arbitrarily and other function will be our v prime or dv arbitrarily so we're going to make up the u by differentiating u and we're going to make up v by integrating our v prime here we pick up e to the negative st as our u because it's easy to differentiate and we pick up sine of at dt as our v prime because it is easy to integrate so derivative of e to the negative st is negative s e to the negative st and antiderivative of sine of at is negative 1 over a cosine of at here is a practical unit circle that you can find integrals and derivatives of trigonometric functions this is cosine x positive direction negative cosine direction positive sine direction and negative sine direction if you go to counterclockwise you get the antiderivative or integrals of the trigonometric functions if you go to clockwise this direction then you get the derivatives of the functions so counterclockwise or anticlockwise is the antiderivative clockwise is the derivative so sine of a t positive sine of a t integral is one step behind negative cosine a t times 1 over a this argument here now we're going to apply integration by parts formula because our u v dv and du is ready so f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity so u times v this formula here our u is e to the negative st our v is negative 1 over a that we can pull negative to the front and a to the denominator negative 1 over a times cosine of at from 0 to a minus integral of v du our v is negative 1 over a cosine of at and our du is times negative s e to the negative st dt here we can pull negative s and negative 1 over a in front of the integral sign negative times negative is positive times negative is still negative so we obtain here negative s over a times integral of e to the negative st times cosine of at dt and here if you plug in upper boundary which is infinity 
e to the negative infinity is zero. Zero times anything is zero, so upper boundary is zero. Minus, if you plug in lower boundary is zero, e to the zero is one, cosine of zero is one, negative one times one is negative one over a. So here we obtain negative times negative, positive, so one over a. Let's clean up. So f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity. We have 1 over a from this previous part minus s over a times integral of e to the negative st times cosine of at dt. So this integral requires second time integration by parts. So we're going to do second integration by parts. Let's use again u du v prime and v. You can pick up different letters or you can underline to distinct it from the first integration by parts. Again our u is e to the negative st from our experience and du is negative s e to the negative st dt. So our v prime is cosine of at dt. So integral of cosine here is the cosine and one step behind counterclockwise direction is the positive sine of x. So 1 over a sine of at. Now we're going to apply u times v minus integral of v du instead of this integral. Let's rewrite whatever we had. f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity. 1 over a minus s over a we had and instead of this integral here we're going to apply this formula. u times v is e to the negative st and our v is sine at over a. This is from 0 to a and minus integral of v du and our v is 1 over a sine of at and our du is negative s e to the negative st dt. Here 1 over a and negative s can be pulled in front of the integral sign and negative times negative is positive. So here we obtain plus s over a times integral of e to the negative st sine of at dt. And here if we plug in upper boundary a which is infinity e to the negative infinity is 0 and 0 times anything is 0 so upper boundary is 0 and in the lower boundary sine of 0 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0 so this whole chunk is 0 so what we have is f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity 1 over a minus s over a here we have times s over a and this integral here is exactly f of s because e to the st times sine of at is our start point that's what we defined f of s our f of s is e to the st times sine of at so this integration by parts is the repeating integrating by parts which is circular method so you have to stop at some point and substitute so what we have now is f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity 1 over a minus we can multiply out this s squared over a squared f of s we don't need limit anymore because we don't have any t variable here. So now we're going to solve for f of s here. So we have 1 f of s here and negative s squared over a squared f of s here. So we can merge them. So 1 plus s squared over a squared f of s is equal to what is left on the right is 1 over a. Now we can merge this fraction, a squared times 1 is a squared 
plus s squared over a squared f of s is equal to 1 over a. Now we can multiply whole fraction by a squared over a squared plus s squared. So we can solve for f of s. This cancels that, this cancels this. If we multiply with that, we obtain f of s is equal to a over a squared plus s squared. So this is the answer. So we can generalize Laplace transform of sine function as a over a squared plus s squared. So that means if we have Laplace transform of sine of 3 t, then it will be here our a argument is 3. So it's going to be 3 over s squared plus 3 squared, which is 9. If you have Laplace of 5 sine of 7 t, then it will be 5 times Laplace of sine of 7 t, because Laplace is the linear operator. So it's going to be 5 times 7 over s squared plus 7 squared, which is 49. And if you clean up, it's going to be 45 over s squared plus 49. Now we know how to take Laplace transform of sine function practically. Let's derive cosine function this time. Now we have cosine function, cosine of at. So Laplace of cosine of at will be equal to, we're going to apply definition of f of s, which is limit as a is approaching to infinity integral from a to infinity e to the negative st times f of t which is our cosine of at here dt now we know that this integral will be integration by parts and we need u and our dv to be able to make our du and our v our u will be e to the negative st and our du will be the derivative of this, which is negative s e to the negative st. Our v prime will be cosine of at dt. And our v will be 1 over a sine of at. If you go one step back, counterclockwise, you find the integral of cosine times 1 over the argument here. Now we are going to plug in u times v minus integral of v du. We had f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity. So u times v, which is e to the negative st times sine of a t over a from 0 to a minus integral of v du. Our v is 1 over a sine of a t times du, which is negative s e to the negative st dt. If we rearrange here, it's going to be negative times negative is positive, and s over a can be pulled out of the integral sign. What is left inside is e to the negative st times sine of at dt. Let's clean up everything f of s is equal to limit as a is approaching to infinity. If you plug in here upper boundary a, e to the negative infinity is 0, 0 times anything is 0 from the upper boundary. And if you plug in 0 here, sine of 0 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0. And lower boundary is also 0. So this whole chunk is 0 when we take the limit. And here we have s over a times this integral. We know the answer of this integral from the previous part because this is Laplace of sine of at, which was a over s squared plus a squared. So we can rewrite this as a over s squared plus a squared instead of this integral. So a cancels a, so s over s squared plus a squared is the answer. So we can generalize Laplace transform of cosine function. So Laplace of cosine function 
will be equal to s over s squared plus a squared. So let's say we have Laplace transform of cosine of 3t. Then it's going to be equal to s over s squared plus 9. Our argument a is here 3. Let's say we have Laplace transform of 5 cosine of 2t. Then we can rewrite this as 5 Laplace of cosine of 2t because Laplace is the linear operator. So it's going to be 5 times s over s squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. And if you simplify, 5s over s squared plus 4 is the Laplace transform of 5 cosine of 2t. So far now, we're able to do Laplace transform of sine, cosine, constant, and exponential functions. Let's combine everything and do some mixed problems at the next part.